in our situation, in our same in our life, in our in our daily activities. So we pray in that direction in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come before the throne of mercy, recognizing that indeed you are greater in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We say thank you even for this opportunity that you have given us, our Father, to listen to your ways. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jehovah, we pray, Abba Father, Abba Father, we declare your presence in this meeting, O God Almighty. We declare you as a preacher, we declare you as an interpreter, we declare you as Abba Father, a teacher. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Abba Father, arise and let our heavenly start in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jehovah, arise and take who bring us, take who control. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Go. Oh, Jehovah Mighty, just be here as the Zosef for the person in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, help me to interpret the scripture, to interpret the message to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can take our seat comfortably. Church, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I say good morning and welcome. As usual, our mother always tells us to say, you have to greet your neighbor wherever you are seated. So greet your neighbor and tell them they have done well to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, allow me to recognize the presence of our Holy Minister in church, Reverend Adit Kekapea, who is also a Lusaka Presbyterian Stewardship Convener. Mother, I salute your place and I'm humbled to stand before your great congregation and the great people of God. I also recognize the presence of our deaconess in our ministry. I say I'm humbled to stand before you. Allow me to recognize and acknowledge the leadership of this great church and the stewardship convener for giving me this opportunity to stand before the great people of God and deliver the message. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, today uh, on the Stewardship Sunday, we are sharing on a theme, on a theme, stewardship as a practical component of God's mission. Stewardship as a practical component of God's mission. Every time we hear about stewardship, the first thing that comes in our mind is that the steward is the person who counts money for the church. Is the person who ushers people in and out. A steward is the one who maintains order by directing people where to sit and the one who stands on the doors that's what comes in our mind every time we hear about it, stewardship and then who is a steward according to webster dictionary stewardship is managing and caring for things that belongs to someone else hallelujah we are saying stewardship is about management we are simply saying stewardship is managing the properties, resources that originally belongs to someone. In simplest language, we can say stewardship is all about caring that which has been entrusted with you. Hallelujah, church. So we are just caretakers. We are just managers managing the properties, resources that belongs to someone. We are all stewards. Practical component of God's mission. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the mission of God is to save humankind and to restore His glory for the betterment of His creation. And the restoration cannot be done if you and I, we are not contributing to the work of God because we are component of God's mission. I'm simply saying, there can never be Development where there is no 
management. When the manager decides to speak, when duty the company will suffer and eventually it will collapse. We see in the book of Genesis chapter number 2, verse 4, the writer says, when God made the universe, there were no plants, neither a seed was planted. Why? Because there was no man to take care of the plants. So we see that before the plantation, before everything came to be managed, there must be a manager to take control of the resources. So when the manager decided to start watching, they, when the manager start or decide to start watching from the distance or at the distance, things will never move. Sometimes even in church we have people who say, even when the church or the section is struggling so much, just to raise entry fee. Some member are busy saying, Hallelujah. Is that being a good steward? The church is struggling so much, and this one is saying, Inen The master or the owner who not let his company or his duty fail because of this less and wicked steward will say, I will go and change the management before this steward destroy my company or my properties with the throng and saying, in a Kalatam Brothers in the Lord, if I misuse, if I misuse this word, I will not be answerable to anybody. If I misuse this word, even to the extent of losing it, I will not be answerable to anybody because it's my fault. Hallelujah. But if I misuse and destroy this microphone, which belongs to the church, I will be answerable because it's not mine. Hallelujah. I will be answerable because it belongs to the church. It's not mine. I'm just a steward. I'm just a manager. I've been just given the mandate to use this microphone. And at the end of the day, I should bring the microphone the way I get it. I got it. Hallelujah. Amen. Even according to Psalms chapter number 24, verse 1 to 2, the writer clearly reminds us that the world and everything in it belongs to God. When we say everything, we mean everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Including plants, animals, people, and all the resources we can think of. Therefore, if God owns everything, we are just stewards, caretakers, and the managers. Just like the three servants we see in the book of Matthew, chapter number 25, 14 through to 8. This is the parable of three servants where the master called three servants. And the writer says he entrusted them with easy properties. To the first servant, he gave five gold coins. To the second, he gave two gold coins. And to the third servant, he gave one gold coin. And he left the country. After some time back, the master came, demanding for easy properties. The one who received five said, Master C, you entrusted me with five gold coins. Here I have gained another five. And the master said, you are a very good servant and the favorite one. I will entrust you even more than you received. The second servant also came and said, Master, you gave me two. Here I have gained another two. The master said, you are a very good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. But the very servant went and hurried 
the coin which he received. Say, I know the master. He is very difficult. He is, he is not a very understanding master. If I happen to lose this one coin, I don't know if it will take a lot. Therefore, he decided to use plan B and hide the coin. Right away, he came walking majestically in the presence of the master, saying, I have brought what you gave me. Because I was afraid, if I lose it, maybe you can take my life. And then the master responded by saying, you are a very wicked and lazy steward. Hallelujah. Amen. You are very wicked and lazy manager. You have taken my money to the bank so that it can gain and multiply. By the end of the day, I will have gotten the interest on it. I don't know that which God has entrusted you with, which you have decided to hide and not use it to the glory of God. But all I show are all of our ways that God has given you and me the different talents according to our abilities. The two servants went immediately and started investing the man. Hallelujah. Change of just a few points. I have just a few points. I have a few points to share with you and then we conclude. The first point that I would like us to share is everything belongs to God. The first point, everything belongs to God. Yes, we can proudly say I am educated. I now own houses. I have a car. I have cars. I have money and everything I need. Forgetting that it's all because of God. Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 17. So then, you must never think that you have made yourself wealth by your own power and strength. Remember that it is the Lord your God who give you power to become rich. Hallelujah. Amen. When you become rich, you should not forget that it is the power of God for you to become rich. You are the one you are today because of God. You are here because of God. And remember everything you possess belongs to God. The Bible is saying everything. When we say everything, your God, your children, your family belongs to God. So when you own very much, you should not forget and be boss to say it's my power that's going to destroy. Remember that it's God who has given you the power and the ability to become who you are today. Hallelujah. We should remember, Shane, that everything belongs to God. We are just the stewards, we are just the managers, we are just the caretakers. And any time the owner who will come back to demand his properties. Hallelujah. Amen. If at all we own all those things, by this time, Abafwa Gabana Fina command. Hallelujah. But because we don't own anything, when we die, do we get anything? It remains here because it's not ours. Hallelujah, church. And therefore, we will be answerable to God on how we use the resources He has entrusted us with. Imagine being answerable for your own car, being answerable for your money, being answerable just for misusing your own phone, being answerable just for misusing your properties. That should remind us that it's not ours, it belongs to God. We are just the stewards. Our neighbors, families, orphans, widows, and so many less privileged people are suffering, and yet we have more than enough to help them. That's not being a good steward. Your neighbor is struggling just to have a meal. Your neighbor is struggling just to go to school, and you have enough to support them. You are not being, have not been a good steward. Hallelujah. 
Every time I should remind, you should remember that it belongs to God. Point number two. It is a privilege to be involved in the mission of God. Is there on the screen? It is a privilege to be involved in the mission of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are more than you think. And God has entrusted you with a talent or talents. That is to say, God has given you a lot of value, ability, and the potentials. We are all worthy so much. There, we should not let any person make you think rest of yourself. I don't know the gift that God has given you, but that went so much to the Lord. I don't know that which you have received from God, but it divides so much to the Lord. Remember, he called them differently and he gave them ability I and mean, talents according to their abilities. Others are just they are to sweep and clean the church. They are serving the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Others are just there to encourage others are serving the purpose of God. Others are just there as a choir just to serve the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The question that we can ask is what talent, resources God has given you to manage? To serve he has given to some he has given spiritual gifts others in the church are intercessors their duty is to, to be in the city or is to be in the city for the church to operate very well others have been given the talents as squares And therefore, when they preach, the lives of people are saved. Hallelujah. Amen. And people are coming back to God. Our people have been given the gift as counselors. Their duty is to be counseling people that destroy marriages. They go there time to time to encourage them. To encourage the younger ones how to live the life pleasing God. That is their gift. God has given us different gifts. To some, it's human resource to manage. We have people that fall in that category. Top of teachers, nurses, doctors. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are unable to identify your gift, your ability, you end up doing what that God which has not given you. What patana? Hallelujah. But God is saying, the Bible is saying, others have been given the ability, the talent, has human resource to manage. Others just to take care of the people of God. Giving them well hospitality. Well, coming them comfortably. Let them feel at all and make them feel at peace. Sometimes it's not the panel of aspirin or other medicine that you speak of. Even the way you treat them, the way you approach them, the way you welcome them, the way you give them the reception will make somebody be healed. Hallelujah. The way Hallelujah. I'm to Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, church. There is something we give people, matters must be gone. That's why even Jesus himself was saying, I've not come here as a manager. I've not come here as the boss, but I'm here as a servant. Hallelujah. Amen. You and I, we are servants, and the servant receives nothing but to offer. Hallelujah. Amen. We are here to offer the sentence of God so that the mission of God may be achieved. In our sections, in our various communities, we can do it. To some, He has given them material resources, means of production. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible in Deuteronomy was reminding us that when you become rich, remember it's not your power nor your strength. It's the Lord who has caused you to become rich because the some are poor. So you should remember that it's not your power, it's not your school. Yes, I'm saying school is important, but remember it's because of God. Others have tried from them to want to say that you are a person. Hallelujah. I'm not saying the farmers are from the Lord to say them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to say, let's say, I'm not saying we should not be giving because of God has not given you that. Hallelujah, church. So, that's what God has done. To some, He has given the wisdom and knowledge to understand and interpret things. When they are there, are devising the management to say, What about if we do this? We do that. That is their gift and their calling. Just to be advising the church. So each and everyone here has something to do in this church. In this church, there is no one to be watching other people doing. We are all stewards. And remember we are saying, steward is a perfect component of God's mission. So we are all stewards. With all these talents given to us, do we now realize that we are all stewards? In that family, company, section, and the community, and in this great church, do you realize that you, you are a steward? Ask your neighbor who is a steward. I don't know the answer I'm going to give you. But you went to see them outside. You see, they will remind you to say, the one who counts money. Hallelujah. We are all stewards of God. Therefore, let's wait diligently to the execution of our responsibilities, knowing that we shall give an account to our master. However, let us be like the two telling servants who utilize their talents very well. That was the entrusted with them. And the master said, well done, thank you for saving. Receive the reward which has been prepared before you and enjoy the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, church. Amen. It's my prayer that we shall utilize the talents or talent that has been given to us very well so that by the end of the day we receive the reward. May God bless us all. Amen. Amen.